Joke on such a horrible night. Romeo? Romeo, where are you? I wonder where that cat went. Oh, well. Such a terrible night. Well, the mistress is away. I might as well read something nice. Maybe something by Edgar Allan Poe. E. A. Poe. Hmm. Edgar Allan Poe, the master of horror, advanced with giant steps during the renaissance of literature in this country. He was a genius as a poet and as a writer, and uniting both talents, he created a gender that made him forever famous. It is in this light that we have been inspired to offer these stories, trying to leave in them the essence of the witchcraft with which the illustrious American combined the supernatural, both in his life and in his stories, steeping them in mystery and intrigue. It's a pity that they permit him to experiment with human beings. Take it easy, Doc. You're right, McConklin. Defend our profession against this imposture. But this theory of hypnotization could be of great help to the insane if it works. In my opinion, it's an amazing assumption. Oh, the theory's ridiculous! It's ridiculous, but that's why they've authorized me to try it out. <coughs> In hypnotizing any person, his body is separated from all volition. The spirit departs the body, and the body becomes empty, just a vacuum. Insanity is caused by a little part of our brain being injured. A small portion of our body, not of our spirit, our vital force. That force is immaterial, for that force cannot be destroyed. Comprehend, Chambers? Then why attempt to hypnotize the insane? Perhaps to prove that by separating the volition and the body, the volition may then function properly. But operating on the insane in a state of hypnosis... He will recover in a normal manner. Ah. Uh, and the insane you're going to treat? A young woman. Her name is Lucia. Her case is very simple. She lived in the country the daughter of a farmer. Her eighth little brother had just been born, and one morning she took him out for his first walk. She had just stared without understanding anything. She then stooped down to pick up the infant which had fallen among the rocks in that waving white field of flowers. She began arranging them. 
From that time on, she has lived with only one idea, a single image, a sea of flowers swaying in the wind. Let me go. No. And that one. And perhaps you'll cure him also, Ekstrom. Arranging your flowers, isn't that right, Lucia? Don't be afraid, come. How do you arrange your flowers, Lucia? I clean the petals, I clean the leaves, I clean the petals. Is she always like this? Always. Lucia? Lucia? Watch. Look at the flowers. Look at them, Lucia. Look. Do you recall the way they moved? The movement of the flowers, Lucia? Slowly moving. One side. Then the other, one side, the other. Very slowly, you're sleeping. Just like the flowers. You are tired. Very tired. Your eyes are very heavy because you are tired. You will sleep. The soft wind now sleeps. The flowers are sleeping also, and so are you. You are now asleep. Thank you. Does she ever stop? Does she ever stop moving her hands? Never. Even when asleep, she moves them. Well, that is all, gentlemen. And tomorrow? Tomorrow she'll waken from this sleep, and then we'll see the results. Shall we leave? planned in celebration of Dr. Ekstrom's successful treatment of Lucia was spoiled when word arrived that Lucia had died of shock to find herself in a madhouse. Possibly McCaughlin was correct. I shouldn't have experimented on that poor sick creature. Professor Ekstrom, the Magnificent. Now you see it, now you don't. Zip! The insane reclaim their reason. They applaud. I bow. And I retire to make way for the trained seals and barrack, eh? How's that? Interesting, maestro. Tell me in which circus. I wouldn't want to miss your act. Are you mocking me? Mm hmm Yes, maestro. With all due respect, of course, but I am making fun of you. <clears throat> May I know why? It's unfortunate that the poor girl died, but consider, for it's clear that the experiment was successful. 
You said that you'd be content by helping that girl in some manner. She recovered some of her senses, and you did it. Yes, yes, but then she died. Listen, but who could have known that she would go into shock and die? Don't give up now, maestro. Pull yourself together. It's easy to see you're young with a whole lifetime ahead of you. If I were only in your place. I don't think you'd be very happy. Why not? Because if you were in my place, you'd have a maximum of one year to live. I can't believe it. No, maestro. The diagnosis couldn't be more simple or more certain. But why didn't you tell me before? What for? That's why tonight I arrived earlier than usual. I plan to go away. What? To Scotland. I want to enjoy the time left me. I'm sorry. No, no, don't be sad. I have no recourse. <coughs> well, now you see why I made fun of your problems. If you were in my place, they would seem petty indeed. I have only one problem, a preoccupation, a desire to survive, with success or without it, to live. Do you understand? To live until the very last moment, and to try to get, by any means, one minute more. Just one more minute. To try to live one minute more. Should we possibly try it? No one has ever tried to hypnotize a man who is dying. Hypnotize a human about to expire? That's right. If I were able to take possession of your will before you die, if I could separate your soul from your body, suspended, suspended, suspended mortality. I could live forever, no, my friend. No, this isn't logical and might be dangerous. We must forget the idea. Yes, maestro, yes. You can do it. <coughs> I'm willing. But consider the no, peril. No. Yes, maestro, we have to do it. When it is certain that the end might be drawing near, you'll help me. But think a bit how very important this could be for us both. You see, it would signify your vindication. And for me? For you, nothing, Henry. Nothing. To live hypnotized is not to live, do you understand? It's like suspended animation. It's not, it just isn't living. Yes, Meister, yes, I understand. But for me, there's a more important consideration. If you are successful, we will be remembered forevermore as the case of Mr. Valdemar. I'm afraid it's a hopeless case. Does it hurt very much? This will ease the pain. You'll be feeling better. You'll soon be up and around. Don't bother. I was almost a licensed physician. I know my condition. <coughs> Nothing can be done. Considering Valdemar's hopeless condition, Ekstrom promised to be with his friend when the last hours were at hand and to administer the hypnotic treatment. Why did he send for Dr. Ekstrom? I don't know, Doctor, but I called late today. Is he feeling? Opinion of the doctors is that he won't survive the night. Who is with him? Doctors Chambers and McCaffrey. I see. Charles, please ask the doctors to come in here for a moment. Whatever you say, doctor. Thank you.
Dr. Ekstrom just arrived. He wants to talk to you. In this document of his own handwriting, Mr. Voldemort says that I, only I myself, may accompany him in his last moment. For that reason, I am asking you to leave now. We cannot permit this, sir. We're his personal physician. You as we... doctors have affirmed and certified that Mr. Voldemort will die within a few hours. Isn't that so? That's right. Then there's nothing more to say, is there? Will you leave here at once? Henry, it is I, Ekstrom. <coughs> it just hurts so, doesn't it? A very painful hurt. And hard. Like this. And with each and every breath taken, the pain explodes. You breathe. And it explodes. You breathe, and it explodes. You breathe, and it explodes, see? Like my hand opening. But you know that nothing goes on eternally. Now watch this. My moving hand is tired, very tired, from opening and closing. From opening and closing. See? And goodbye, pain. Your pain is gone. You're getting tired, fatigued. You don't feel anything. You don't think anything. Slumber. Only slumber. Are sleeping. Henry, do you hear? Do you hear, Henry? Does your chest pain you? No. What are you doing now? Sleeping. Begin. Slumber. Sleep soundly and long, my dear friend. Just rest. <sighs> Do you wish anything, sir? No. We must let him rest. Why don't you sit with me? We have to wait. And wait for a long time. Very well, sir. Dr. Ekstrom, huh? Dr. Ekstrom. Huh? What is it's it? Henry. 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 What's wrong, Henry?
Henry. Henry. God. Get your mirror quickly. Please hurry. Yes, sir. Quickly. Charles, light. Some light over here. Right away, sir. Henry. Henry, listen. Can you hear me? My dear friend, what is it? Henry, are you able to hear me? Yes. Do you clearly understand everything that I'm saying? Everything? Does your chest pain you? No. Are you resting? No. Are you sleeping? No. I'm dead. Dead? Dead, did you say? Henry, what did you just say? afraid. It's impossible. Impossible, Henry. You're not dead. Only hypnotized. Asleep. I've made it possible for you to rest. Why, you'll go on resting as long as you want to. Perhaps you'll live forever and without pain or worry, Henry. For all time, do you hear? Not for a minute. Days. A fortnight. A month. Two months. Three months? Three months. That's right. He tells me in the letter that Valdemar fell into the hypnotic state that same night, or three months ago. He's a hypocrite. <laughs> a vulgar charlatan and faker. Be that as it may, I think that we should accept his invitation. I'm very grateful that you accepted my invitation, especially to you, who've shown me signs of being very skeptical. As that concerns me, I'm ready to give you a thousand apologies after no need. you've shown me you can cure Valdemar. Just a moment. I never said I could cure him. I said that by hypnotizing him, I could avoid his death. Three months ago, you diagnosed that it was impossible that Valdemar would live. One more night. Now you will see that I have done it. So enter, please, and examine him. This young man has departed. No. He appears to be dead, but he is not. Now you will see. Henry? 
Henry. Do you hear me? Please listen, my son. In just a moment, my hand opens and closes just like this. Do you feel it? How it opens and closes? Henry, speak to me. Henry, please answer. Answer at once. The divers don't speak, my dear Angstrom. But he is not dead. Believe me, he isn't dead. I speak to him, and he has responded for the last three months. Three. But if he's dead, explain his state of preservation. There, now, extra. In school, they also showed us how to embalm. It's very simple. Oh. Yes. Perhaps one injects a bit of... No, no, I would never do that. No, no, he is not dead. He lives for these last three months. But Voldemort is alive, sleeping. Don't you comprehend? He sleeps! Henry. Henry, do you hear me? You're sleeping. You're sleeping, aren't you? No, I am dead. No, you're not dead, my friend. Only sleeping. You've heard him. You saw how his lips were moving. Are you convinced now, my friend? I've made it possible for him to live these three months, prolong his life. Ekstrom, but this is horrible. As, as, as a physician, I admire your experiment. But as a man, as a Christian, I, I can't. I think you should wake him up now. Yes, I beg you to waken him. I apologize, but please, let him die in the peace of God. All right. I'll do it now that you've observed the power of the force of hypnotism. If it weren't for that, Henry Valdemar would be now only a mass of bones and carnal putrefaction. Henry? Henry? I'm going to wake you. It's necessary. No, don't do it. I'm dead. You're wrong. You're only hypnotized. Sleepy. I'm going to cause you to awaken. I'm placing my palm closely over your face. When I open it, sleep no longer. When I open my hand, you shall wake up. Romeo took out of the house on a night like this. In you go. Now be good. Mm. Mm. Bad Pat. Oh, 
Rovio, can't you ever behave yourself? Oh. That you don't even speak to me lately. You come in. Fill your jug with wine and you sit there in your corner. I prepare your food when you ask for it. Or you tell me the vineyards are heavy with grapes or that they're not so heavy. And nothing else. Sometimes when we're together, hours and hours go by without a single word being said. It's horrible, John. I'm like that, Teresa. I've always been like this. I believe you have no real reason to complain about anything at all. You have a much larger house than you lived in before with your parents. I bought you many fine clothes and jewelry. And so, you have all that a woman could possibly want, even a little party once in a while. Like this evening, for example, where you'll be able to polka and laugh until you get tired. <laughs> Good evening, madam. We welcome you. We have begun to visit you, father. Right this way. Right this way. Coming through. <laughs> This is your place in the festival of the grape harvest. Let's all celebrate the best harvest that's ever been recorded. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. Yes, of course. Have something to drink. It's the best harvest ever recorded. Every year they celebrate the best ah. harvest ever recorded. What's wrong with that? It was also done by our parents and... and... Our grandparents and the grandparents of our grandparents. Yes, I know it. It's the same every year. We hear the same speeches. The same men get inebriated while the maidens get compromised. There are customs, Teresa. Have a little charity. <laughs> Why charity? One grand brawl of drunks and the next day back to working and plowing the earth. That's our job. But does everything have to be work? Did you ever stop to think that where the vineyards end, the road goes on? That there are other rivers and other mountains? Haven't you planned to go to other countries? Had a curiosity to find what lies beyond all this? Beyond all this? Oh, beyond all this, I simply meant, I don't know, just beyond. Perhaps this will help. I think he was right for a change. This year, the grapes were very good, eh? And abundant. Drink up. No, thank you. Perhaps a little. No, now, please stop. I prefer that we dance the polka. You know I don't polka well. Ah, uh, I forgot. I never remember. Attention! This honorable town of Avalon may feel rightly proud and happy. Lie! A mess of lies! Oh. Because this village couldn't be happy until now! And now I'd like to introduce myself, with your permission. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Maurice Raypon. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Maurice Raypon, who has traveled in his cart league after league for days and days to bring you happiness, honorable citizens of this illustrious village of Avalon, to bring you, I repeat, happiness. Only authentic happiness. But and listen, what's young man, who gave you permission to My speak? esteemed and revered mayor, your humble servant. Tell me, how did you know the office that I hold? By your elegance, by your dignity, and by your esteem which reflects the dignity of office. And because I heard when you said, as mayor of Avalon. <laughs> <laughs> Monsieur Mayor, am I invited to your party? Ah, you're already in it. And besides, just about every year a traveling pitchman comes pitchman. by. Pitchman! That is an insult. A pitchman, no. Peddlers can lie and cheat and try every trick of the trade. But I give. I give everything. I am happy giving away everything I have. Music, happy music. Let there be music, laughs, and happiness, because now you have Maurice Ripoll. Well, <laughs> you should rest your voice, and this will refresh that raw throat. Ah, very fine. There's none any better. There is no wine to compare with Ravignac. <clears throat> To compare with Avalon. That's so good that it not only makes one joyous, but it is capable of working miracles. Veritable miracles can come from the wine of Avalon, which are both prodigious and incredible. And now watch closely. Presto! More pretty scar to greet the loved one from a distance. <laughs> to put a pretty frame on a pretty face. To cover a blush after the very first kiss. Blood red for the passionate ones. Sky blue for the very shy one. Grass green for those who wait and hope. And now, the incredible. Silk. The most pure silk, especially woven in a legendary China for Maurice Frépon. Soft silk that caresses the skin like eyes falling in love. And for this beautiful piece, only three casts of wine. And kisses also. Soft silks, fine perfumes, delicate fans, and mirrors. And now, speaking of something else, who will offer me a place to spend the night? I, uh have in my house a room for guests. Ah, do? yes. Any corner will do just fine. I'm very grateful, Monsieur... Sevive. Jean Sevive. Meet my wife. My pleasure. Is that mug yours? Yes. Permit me. In recognition of your beauty, my admiration. Only where a lady like you has drunk can this ever happen. more why we should go away together. But Teresa... Have you stopped to think what it means to leave your house? Abandon your husband? Please, think. But I'm sure. I've thought it over. Don't be pensive. Three days ago, you asked me to close my eyes. To forget everything. What have I to offer you? A broken down old cart. And all of the adventures that lie ahead. What did you say the first time? I'm offering you freedom.
no one ever talked to me that way. Until you arrived, the only words that I heard from a man were those from that stranger. That silent individual who sits silently in his chair and drinks his mug of wine. With never a phrase as tender, never a smile. And then one day there was you. And, and you made a rose appear in an empty vessel. what can be called a happy man. Plush vineyards, a big house, and a pretty wife who knows all the secrets of cooking. I presume you do a lot of traveling. There's always a horizon in front of one. There's always the wish to know what's beyond it. Somehow. Things have changed? How? I don't know. I think the five days I've spent here have made me change my outlook. I think it would be nice not to move, not to roam any longer, to have a house like this, instead of sleeping in the cart, where I usually bed down. I wish I had a room that's fresh and clean, where the silence and the peace would let me sleep all the time I wished. I agree with that. But if you were the owner of this house, many times you'd have to get up from the table without finishing all your meal. Because the workers forget when it's time to return to their labors, and they need reminding. Are you leaving now? Yes. I want to see if they've decided to go back to work. When the harvest isn't your own property, it's difficult to get interested. When will you return? Not before dawn, depending upon how well they're doing. Goodbye now. So long, Monsieur Samovey. Teresa, yesterday afternoon when I went to the vineyard, you were up in the granary, weren't you? Yes, but why? Oh, and I saw those bags of flour out here on the porch. I wondered how they got here. Did you bring them yourself? Yes. Be careful. They're very heavy. You can hurt yourself. Ask somebody to help you next time. Ask Maurice. The joy of going from one place to another without a set rose. Stop that washing. Listen to me. I need you desperately. I need you because you're dear to me. You're already part of me. Water for my thirst. A light for my eyes. Morning, Mr. Samabe. Good morning. Pretty early to be drinking. Oh, uh, there's nothing like a mug of wine right after a rising to give strength throughout the entire day. You don't drink much, do you? Huh. But of course, I not only drink wine, I'm considered a connoisseur of wines. Are you serious? I have to know all about them. I have some wines that haven't even been tasted. Over here, from last year's harvest, we have these four types that... Clumsy of me. What a shame. Anyway, the rose was dying. As I was saying, with last year's harvest, I made these four types. Black, 
type of mard. Black, type of name. Black, <laughs> type Savini. And a white Montrachet. I will drink with you. When two drink together, it tastes much better. The pomade. Your health. Your health. How is it? But good. But very good. And these are from last year's pressings, eh? And before we taste the rest, I want you to try some that have been in my cellar for all half a century. You've never in your life tasted anything like them. A real treat. If you're a connoisseur and can appreciate it. Why, of course. Ah. Well, then, come with me. We take a look downstairs. That is, if you feel like it. Of course I do. I'll be glad to. I'm going to have you taste all the great seasons. One of 43, the white one from 16. Uh -huh. You'll become acquainted with the entire history of Avalon through its famous wines. And then you will know the secret. The secret? Uh-huh. The great secret of the Samovay family. Follow me. You will taste the wine preferred by my grandfather and my father. You'll taste the wine that I myself judge to be the best in the whole world. Some old burgundy, I'll wager. No. The wine that was always preferred by my family is not from burgundy. It isn't even French. No? No. It's Spanish. <laughs> I'd like to see all the faces in this town if they knew that the most valuable thing in the Samabe family's wine cellar is a cask of Amontillado. This way. Just make yourself right at home. Now you'll get to know a really good wine. Taste it carefully, then tell me. Go on, drink up. How is it? I thought you'd like it. This is just the beginning. Come on. Come. Here's where I keep the best of the old. I would like your opinion. Hey? Eh? I drink with you. Your health. How is it? Shall we go on?
This one is a bit softer, but... It deserves tasting. Here, try it. Didn't you say you were a connoisseur? Yes. Drink up, then. Hmm. Shall we go on? <laughs> You're doing fine. <laughs> yes, very fine. <laughs> Come on. Let's go. This way. <laughs> and here is the great secret. Monteado from Spain, vintage 1733. One drop in any cask of new wine is enough to give it the best bouquet. Try it. And you take this. <laughs> What do you think? Excellent. Good. You shall have another one, then. You'll never taste a wine like this again. In a way, this wine reminds me of my wife. Uh, uh, I wish I had the courage and the fluency to be able to explain to you, for example, what I feel when I taste this wine. To be able to say pretty things like you to my wife. Things I'd like to say, but don't know how. Perhaps you'll show me how, eh? Oh, boy. How to whisper sweet nothings, eh? No, I couldn't. <laughs> you couldn't now if you wanted to, eh? I think you've had too much wine, eh? Yeah. I drank too much. What a pity. Why don't you go to sleep for a while, eh? <laughs> go on. Lie down now. That's it. Go to sleep. Meanwhile, I've got some work to do. I'm going to build a wall here to protect the precious Amontillado. Where are you? Can you hear me? What have you done here? Samave, release me. Let me go, Samave. Calm yourself. Calm yourself and rest. Remember that you're taking a trip, <laughs> a long trip. You're taking a trip beyond the horizon. I know you're only teasing me. That's it. Because I'm inebriated. I deserve it. But you've had your laugh. The joke is over. The prank is finished, eh? Hmm? Over and done! Why do you keep persisting in building that wall? I told you I had to construct this wall to protect my precious Amontillado. Uh, let's see. What am I forgetting to do now? I'm sure I've forgotten something. What? Here I build a wall, and I forget to leave a place for the door. You're not planning on leaving me here. Release me, please, I beg you. I want to make you happy. You said that you wanted to have a house that's solid, 
And you should Please have. forget it. I can't begin to forget that you wanted to sleep in an airy place, to have a room that was clean and comfortable, where silence and peace would thereby permit you to sleep. And here you have it. Let's be serious. I know why you've done this, but you're wrong. Just believe that I wouldn't have permitted her to depart. I told her it was bad. I told her to remain here. I told her there, that it was... See how right I am? Your trouble is you talk too much. You don't scare me at all, see? Do you hear? You won't get anything by this. Then I'll scream for somebody to help! Scream if you want. Nobody will hear you. It's quite useless, I assure you. On the Holy Bible, I promise to go. I swear I'll never again see your wife. Please let me go and you'll never again hear from me. I'll never come back here, I promise. But Sam Bay, don't let me die like this. <laughs> Calm yourself. <laughs> Try to get some rest. You must be very tired, true? I'm tired, too. Building a brick wall is not a game, but it does pass the time. And at the same time, it allows one to rest the mind and to think <laughs> and to remember. As I place the bricks one after another, from each brick a memory returns. You talking at the carnival, talking in my house, talking in the barn, and talking by the river. Talking, talking. Always talking. Don't leave me here, Sam Bay. One afternoon, you said to Teresa, one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard. You are everything to me. Water for my thirst, light for my eyes. And here you have her. Here is your light. You need it. There'll be plenty of soft light. You're together now, just like you wanted. Together forever. No. Rest in tranquility, my friend. In tranquility. Right, putting your chair into the rocker. Bad cat. Come up, put you out in the kitchen. Maybe then you'll stay out of mischief. Can I drink your milk? And be good. 